Previously, we have discussed that fixed time horizon labeling has several drawbacks, especially in financial machine learning. And triple barrier labeling is partially designed to solve these disadvantages. So let's take a look at this method. So on the plot uh, in front of us, we can see the 12 months volatility of S&P 500 index. And as you can see, this volatility is absolutely not fixed. So the, the volatility changes a lot. Uh, for some of the assets, uh, it may have uh, seasonal uh, patterns. But what, what we can clearly see is that the volatility is very different. What it means for us is that actually price changes are also quite different. And in non-volatile periods, 1% uh, of return um, in one day can be quite big movement, movement while in volatile markets during serious drawbacks, 1% uh, of return is very low uh, value and uh, it is just a normal uh, deviation dur during the day. So we should take that into, into account. So let's take a look at the idea of triple barrier labeling. So this method is called triple barrier because it labels an observation according to the first barrier touched out of three barriers. So on the first step, we set two horizontal barriers, which are defined by, by our profit taking and stop loss limits, which are a dynamic function of estimated volatility. So here we call um, these two barriers like profit taking and stop loss levels, meaning that it, they are just upper barrier and lower barrier. Why do we use volatility to, um, to uh, set these barriers? As we have discussed, uh, markets are have various different regimes. And for example, in 2017, we uh, wouldn't use that much of returns uh, and that um, wide barriers to label our S&P 500, for example, ETF, because the volatility was very low. And even 1% of uh, daily movement was quite, uh, quite serious and uh, noticeable. While, for example, in 2008 or 2020, the volatility is much higher and 1% change is just a normal thing. So we need to somehow adjust our barriers by using the volatility. As a result, we set our upper barriers, upper and lower barriers based on the volatility value. So how do we do that? We, multiple, we, we have the, uh, we estimate the volatility of our returns and we say we set a multiplier for that volatility to set upper and lower barrier. What we also set is so-called vertical barrier. It is defined in terms of number of bars or time elapsed since the position was taken. So why do we need this setting? Because that's quite usually how most of the traders or um, asset managers think in terms of a position. They either want to have a, have a fixed profit a level or they will close the position on stop loss level but if nothing happens between these two periods they will just close the position when for example a week or two weeks uh, time pass and uh, that's it <clears throat> so the, uh, uh, let's repeat once more triple barrier labeling labels the event based on the first barrier which is touched so if for example we touch upper barrier the label value will be equal to one. If we touch lower barrier, the label value equals minus one. If we touch vertical barrier, that's a question. We can either label this event as zero, meaning that nothing changed, nothing happened on the market and it will be the third state of our market. So long, short, nothing happened. Or we can just take the price at that period of time and take the sign of uh, the difference between start price and end price of by that period. So the slight modification of uh, triple barrier method is so-called meta labeling, which is quite actively used in financial machine learning. Suppose that you, that you have a model for setting the side of the bet, for example, long or short, and you just need to learn if you should trade or not. So this question is extremely important for professional trader. As we all uh, know from uh, high skilled traders, actually they do know for the most of the time in which direction to trade, 
but there are so many times when they don't know whether they should trade or not. So a good trader is usually not the trader who uh, directly predicts the market, but a trader who knows when to trade. And that's actually for what meta labeling was actually designed. So the algorithm for meta labeling is next. We take the side from our primary model and label it as incorrect or correct. So let's take a small example. For example, we already know that um, Apple stock will go um, in uptrend or downtrend. So let's say we have a fundamental model or we even have a trader or financial analyst who analyzes various financial statements, technical analysis, uh, sentiment analysis, and says if the stock will go up or down. After that, we train a secondary model to determine if we should trade the signal or not. So for example, we can use various features such as uh, primary model features like market state, features indicative or false positives or additional market information. Prior model, as we have discussed, can be a discretionary trader, technical rules, classic one or machine learning model. So it is totally up to you. And what meta labeling does, it generates a great trade-off between recall and precision. So once more, let's discuss how meta labeling works. So on the first uh, step, you have the price prediction of your um, security, either upwards or downwards. After that, you need to label if your prediction was wrong or correct. How do you do that? You can actually use triple barrier labeling to label this type of events. But in this case, you will also set three barriers, upper barrier, lower barrier, and vertical barrier. But in this case, upper and lower barrier are your real take profit and stop loss levels, which is very important because if you trade long, your upper barrier will be your fixed profit level, your lower barrier will be your stop loss level, and vertical barrier is the same. But if you shorten the security, your lower barrier will be your fixed profit, your upper barrier will be your stop loss, and, and vertical barrier stay the same. So what we do, we have a primary model which predicts the, the side of the trade. Based on that uh, side predictions, we label them and understand whether these trades were either positive or negative. And after that, we generate features which and train ML model, which helps us in the future understand if we should trade or not. So this is the uh, um, diagram which shows uh, the um, our actions in meta model setting. So here we have a pri primary model. We have meta model. We generate various features which can be used in both primary model and meta model. After that, we um, have trained our meta model. And then when we have a new filtered event coming to the market, we have primary model to predict the price of a security and we have meta model, which can either accept the signal or block the signal. And after that, we exit, execute the signal or we just block it. So why actually meta labeling works? So why this technique is so powerful and can be can uh, yield uh, extraordinary results? In general, decreasing the number of false positives comes at a cost of increasing the number of false negatives. So on the right hand side, uh, you can see the picture which is quite widely used in, in machine learning world, world, which shows us tr what are true positives and false positives. And what meta labeling is particularly helpful for, because uh, if you want to achieve high uh, F1 score, which is a harmonic mean between precision and recall, we can build a model that, that achieves high, high recall, even, even if the precision is not particularly high. So we can generate lots of data points and generate trend predictions for them. And after that, we can filter, filter them out instead of trying to find uh, and build one model which predicts the ideal um, a trend and ideal way to trade, uh, I, I don't know, some market phenomena. And after that, we, collect, we correct for the low precision by applying meta labeling to the positives predicted by the primary model. So that's how meta labeling, sh uh, how meta labeling 
solves the issue of optimizing F1 score. Because in this case, you don't see the trade-off between uh, recall and precision because your primary model already has extremely high recall, but quite low precision. And when you train your meta model, you can optimize for precision. And the overall F1 score will be much higher comparing to one model which predicts both trend and uh, action based on trend prediction. Why it is also important for meta model? Because there are several features which are extremely important and significant in predicting whether we should trade or not, but absolutely insignificant unimpo- and non-informative in trend predictions. So, for example, various technical indicators such as ADX, uh, average directional index, RSI, relative strength index, or SMA crossover are can be quite useful in meta model, but they like but using them in predicting price trend is basically useless. So that's how meta labeling works. And what we can see is to, uh, uh, we can now take a look at uh, ML FinLab documentations to see how triple barrier labeling and meta model labeling are, uh, are realized in ML Fin library and how can we, we can use ML FinLab's function to create, create these types of labels. So here we can see the same picture for the diagram which we uh, had in the presentation. So we have our primary model, we have features, we have our features plus primary model, we have secondary model, and uh, we can either generate prediction of one, which means to trade, and zero, which means do not trade in meta model setting. So let's take a look at functions which are useful in creating triple barrier uh, labels. So the first function is called add vertical barrier. So here you can see the parameters, which is T events. And that's what we have discussed at the beginning of our lecture. So T events are indices which are filtered out from your data set. So these are filtered events which are used to train your model. We can also see here that we need close prices. And here we have number of days, number of hours, number of minutes, and number of seconds. So basically, this function generates vertical barriers based on your needs. So if you would like to add vertical barriers to your T events, for example, five hours or 20 minutes, you can use this function to generate vertical barriers. So the next function is so-called get events. And this is actually one of the main functions which are used in triple barrier labeling in ML FinLab. It takes close prices and inputs, your filtered events, array of profit taken and stop loss. As we have discussed, do not um, confuse by the naming of profit taken and stop loss. These are actually multipliers of volatility, um, which are used to set upper barrier and lower barrier. So if you would like to build a trend model using triple barrier labeling, your barriers should be um, symmetric, meaning that you set up, for example, two and two. In this case, you won't um, give more preference to uh, one side compared to another. Here we can also see target. Actually, target is a volatility estimate which is used to set our upper and lower barrier. So we usually, as we have discussed, use volatility to as target, but you can also, for example, use implied volatility. So it is totally up to you. So this tar- uh, values from target series will be u- will be multiplied by your profit taken and stop loss multipliers. And based on that, your upper and lower barriers will be set. The minimum returns just simply helps us to filter out uh, labels for which we have the minimum return lower than a specific value. Why it is important? Because sometimes um, you have transaction costs uh, in our trading, and we don't want to trade too we don't want to trade too small price changes in our uh, model. And we can also see that we have here vertical barrier times, which equals to false. So what it means is that we do not add vertical barrier here as a default value, but if we previously use a function called add vertical barrier. Here in this parameter, we can set 
panda series of vertical barrier times, meaning that uh, this function will understand with, that we have vertical barriers for our filtered events, and it will be taken into account when we apply triple barrier labeling to our filtered events. And the final and very important uh, parameter is site prediction. So get events function can be used either to label triple, triple barrier labeling in uh, classical setting, which we have discussed earlier, and also to label, to generate meta labels. So if we have site prediction, our um, PT and SL and SL profit taken and stop loss really become our profit taken and stop loss. And as we have discussed, if we um, um, have minus one as uh, site prediction, and uh, we have profit taken equal to two and stop loss equal to one, it will mean that actually our lower barrier will be uh, will will be more distant comparing to our upper barrier because upper barrier in this case will be our stop loss, not profit taken. Okay, so this function get events is used to generate triple barrier labelings, and the final function is so called get bins. So basically, if you use meta labeling, this is the final function you should use to convert your triple barrier labelings into meta labelings. So what this function does, it actually measures the return which was generated during our uh, meta labeling filtered event. So it takes triple barrier events from the previous function as input and close price series uh, to measure the return of a label. So we have discussed how to use triple barrier labeling and meta labeling on practice, why uh, it is much better to compare it to fixed time labeling. And in the next part of this lecture, we'll discuss, we'll discuss a separate type of labels, which are called trans canyon labels, which are actually extremely useful and uh, applicable if you want to build a trend prediction system.